Hello, my name is Johan Falk, I'm a math and physics teacher in Stockholm, Sweden, and I used to be a Drupal freak. And this is my 30 minutes video about 12 views tips, where I'm gonna show you 12 pretty hidden and good views tips in very high speed. So uh, this is for a presentation at Drupal Camp Stockholm in a few days, so this is some kind of rehearsal for me. 12 views tips and I'm starting just by showing you the site we're going to work with. I've added a special content type called question. I'm going to uh, pretend this is a question, uh, question and answer site, so this is a, a question about coding for example, and you can select a category here, select coding, add some kind of question here, oops, yada yada yada, and you can save, uh, like this. You can also have comments, let's go to the start page on this, uh, let's see, here's a comment. Uh, comments can have flags on them, this is some kind of question, we pretend it's a question, here's some kind of answer to the question, we pretend it's an answer and all the comments have the possibility to have a flag, you can flag it as awesome and that means you vote this as a good answer to the question. So that's the site setup. On this we're going to do some, some interesting views and some tricks uh, just to uh, display some, some of the things you can find in views. Uh, tip number one is to use some of the settings you can find in views uh, to make views work a little bit better for you. Under structure, views and settings you can find some interesting things. For example, I would advise you to show the SQL query when working with views. That will help you find out when things are not working as you uh, hope they should. Also, so showing uh, performance statistics is good to see if anything takes longer than expected or is heavier than expected. I also like this one. Uh, always show the advanced displays, the advanced settings inside views, and always show the master display. I like these. I'm going to save the configuration. And that saves me some, some clicking in views later on. Also, I want to show you this clear cache thing, which is good. 99% of the cases, using the flush all cache from the development module help uh, is enough, but sometimes it is said this button is required. So, that is tip number one, some of the view settings. Next one, I'm going to show you how to uh, use the exclude option in contextual filters in views. To, to do this, I'm going to create a block that displays uh, some content uh, questions in the same category, like other stuff here, uh, when viewing a question. So, I'm going into views and add a new view going to call this related questions like that showing content of type all news first everything that's nice um, no page but a block related questions on the format list actually have a an HTML list of titles that's nice continue and edit so you have hopefully used contextual contextual filters in views before and I'm going to display this uh, this block on uh, question pages. So I'm going to use a contextual filter here. Well, and I'm going to display questions that have the same category. So I'm going to put a contextual filter on uh, taxonomy term. Content has taxonomy term ID. And now I'm using a block. I would normally use uh, panels and page manager and manage contextual filters uh, from that. But now I'm using a block and blocks don't have uh, any way of, of any natural way of getting arguments to the contextual filter. So I'm going to provide it with a default value from the URL taxonomy term ID from URL. Uh, uh, load default filter from node page. That's good for related taxonomy blocks. That's a good option. Let's de-click this one. We don't want to have this block on the taxonomy term page. Limit to category like that. Uh, filter blah, 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 blah. great apply like that and save now this should give us a block 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 here that contains related stuff uh, view related question let's put that in 
sidebar first. I'm doing this high speed as you may notice. I don't think I'm gonna have time for 12 tips on 30 minutes but I'm gonna give it a try and this video will probably be longer than 30 minutes. Okay let's see here if I now go into a page that has a question on it I can get related questions. Let's actually put that block on top. Related questions, let's put it on top and save. There we are. So we can now see related questions, that means questions that also are in the other stuff category. But we have the same, this uh, a node displayed here as well and that kind of sucks because it's not related to itself in that way and that's where the ex exclude option in the contextual filters uh, comes in handy. So I'm going to add a new contextual filter here and filter on node ID, the content ID, add and I'm going to provide a default value since, the, since this is a block uh, content ID from URL da -da 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 -da. And now I am going to use this exclude option in the more options. Instead of, let's apply and save here. Normally this filter would do that, uh, make it so that all uh, only node ID 15 is shown here. But now we have the exact opposite. Everything but node 15 is shown here. So this exclude option makes this node disappear. And that's what we would like to have. Wow, that's tip number two, the exclude option. Uh, now I'm going to show you some sneaky rewriting of links showing the summary as tooltip pop-up. Okay, so inside this block we have now the uh, links here to related questions. I'm going to make uh, the summary or teaser of, of uh, the questions show up as a tooltip here. To do that, I need to add the actual summary. Let's find the body filter, body field, add that, and add that as a field in uh, views. No label, exclude from display, and let's have the summary or trimmed here to 600 characters. Let's also rewrite this and strip any HTML tags because HTML tags don't really show up well as tooltips. Then I'm going to rearrange the fields and put the body on top of the title. And that means I can use the body field as a, a replacement pattern in the title here. So I open the title. This is linked to the original piece of content in the rewrite results. I'm going to output this field as a link. And I'm going to use one thing here, the title text. And I happen to know that I can write now body here. In the title text and I don't need to take care of anything else here in the in the linking because views is already taking care of that this is only overriding the title text of the link that views is creating right now so if I save here and reload the page I should now have yeah tooltip pop up uh, showing the uh, the teaser or, or the summary of these questions. That's kind of nice. Okay, so what's tip number three then? Number four, that is the jump menu. Good thing, nice thing. Let's um, change, uh, the pop-up menu is a format. Not the HTML list, but the jump menu. And this jump menu requires us to have a field contain the path to the, the things we want to uh, go to. So this is a drop-down menu that links you to some other places. We don't have that uh, field set up, uh, that path set up in a field, so I'm going to do that soon. Uh, let's add a field. I'm going to add the NID, the node ID, and no label. Let's not link. Let's rewrite the results to node slash nid apply okay so now I have a field did I exclude let's ex exclude from display that's it and now in the jump menu settings 
no in the settings for the jump menu here. The field containing the path is the content nid. Let's actually hide the go button and yeah, that's probably great. And save. I'm going to show what this looks like. Now, viewing one node, one question, you get related questions in and a select list here in the five most recent ones. You can click one and then you end up on this one. That's kind of useful, I guess. Not perhaps in this particular setting, but hey, it works. You might find use for it uh, some other, in some other context. Cool. Um, we are up to tip number one, two, three, four, and we're on to number five here. The search filter. If you haven't seen one, this one, it will probably blow your mind. Uh, here is a page I've set up for searching uh, questions. And this is a standard views table. Uh, I mean, kind of useful, but I wanna, I'm going to transform this one into a search page. So I'm going to edit the view. Let's close this one. I don't think we need it anymore. The block we will need later on. Okay, so here's the path and page. Let's remove the destination query up there. So what's going on here? We have a page of view here. Now I'm going to turn on a new filter, an exposed filter that is really handy in some cases. The search field here. Search, search terms. I'm going to expose this filter to visitors to allow them to change it. Search for questions, something like that. Apply and save. Now, if you're trying this uh, yourself, you should run cron because otherwise uh, the search module won't index your stuff. Now I have an exposed filter here and I can search for, say, Uxur. And we will find things related to Uxur here. And Magna here probably mentions Uxur in the uh, text or something. Um, if I search question, I probably won't get any because I haven't indexed the new, uh, the new node I created. Okay, so now this is a search page and you can of course uh, have an exposed filter searching for titles and things like that. Um, but right now, uh, well, this field allows you to search anything that the search module would find and that's kind of useful. But we're not really done yet because we want to change the sort criteria here in the search view. Let's remove this one, sorting by post date. We want to sort by relevance. Search score. The higher the score, the better the hit. So let's sort this descending apply. And that's kind of it. So if I search again for Uxor, I should probably get the ones with Uxor in title first. Yeah. Okay. So we have three with Uxor in title and then the rest. All right. That's the search field. Uh, pretty useful. And now tip number six, the search field in a block. My God, isn't this exciting? Uh, if you have exposed uh, exposed, exposed uh, filters in the view, you can use this exposed form settings. Exposed form in block, yes. Let's have exposed form in block. Uh, you can change some exposed form style here. I'm not going to do that right now. Let's see. Reload the blocks page. Search, exposed form, search questions page. So this is the block containing the exposed form for the search questions page view display. Let's put this in, uh, 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 in the header and save. Now, if I go to any page on the site, I have here search for questions, Uxur, and I will be uh, uh, sent here to the search search page. That's kind of handy, isn't it? And that brings us to tip number seven, menu tabs, which will show us answers to questions. Answers to a question. I will use this 
Okay, you can take a breather for five seconds, then I will go on. Okay, so um, I will create a new tab here on uh, a question page here somewhere that shows us a list of all the answers to a question. Let's see if there's answers to a question. Yeah, so here's one, two, three, you know, quite a few answers to this question. I want to show these uh, answers in a separate tab, just the titles and maybe the ratings of, of the answers. So I'm going to do this by creating a new view. I'm doing this from scratch because I think it's kind of useful to show you this. Um, answers to a question. I'm going to show you comments sorted by let's have unsorted because I want to show, uh, sort by by uh, flag votes answers to a question and I'm going to create this on a path called node slash percent slash answers here this percent here will be read as a contextual filter value in views you've probably seen this before let's have a table and whenever I have tables I want to set the items to display to 25 Menu link. I do want a menu link, but we can't create this um, tab thing from the, the quick wizard. So I'm going to continue and edit right here. Okay, let's go to the page display. We have a path. Uh, let's save. That's always a good start. And we actually don't need this relationship to the content. I'm tempted to remove it. Uh, 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 uh. Well, let's start by adding a contextual filter. We're gonna uh, the uh, argument in the path will be used to to connect. Well, read a node ID, the node ID to which the comment is a reply to. Let's apply. And uh, dun, 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 great. Let's actually override title and call it answers to percent one you've probably seen this one before this will be the title of the node but it, it will only be turned into the title if we specify a validation criteria saying this should be a content piece of content and let's say it should be a question as well apply so now if putting the argument 36 here 36 previewing previewing is so good it will say answers to humo and we get all the answer titles here. Let's remove the relationship to content because we don't need it and that will save some performance and then add a relationship to the flag. Flags, uh, flag counter so we can see how many answers each of these have. Uh, count, no answer, how many votes they have. Include only flag content, no, but uh, use this one. Awesome counter. So we can see how many vote each answer as awesome. Let's add a field here for that counter. Flag counter. Let's call it awesome count. And, and save. We could show who has who had made these. Uh, answers but let's not right now okay so let's try again 36 update and preview we have now these six answers also count zero that's kind of sad but hey that's life and uh, now for the trick showing this as a tab here let's go into menu let's show this as a menu tab let's call it answers, answers. there it is this menu here doesn't make sense when you use um, menu tabs, so let's put it at main menu or something. Weight is the usual thing, higher means lower, uh, and save. Now, node 36 has node 36 slash view slash edit slash devel and now also slash answers. If I click answers, we get this view here. Hey, cool. Let's also actually vote some awesomeness here. Awesome and awesome. And we can see that this is reflected in the view here. Nice. Should be maybe 
sorted by awesome count. You can do that yourself. Okay, so that is now menu tabs. And this is actually only start for, oh, okay, we have a few others here. Row count. Uh, that's a quick tip. If you haven't seen this field in views, you should have it. Well, you should see it now. Let's then, in this view where we list all the answers, let's sort by awesome count. Uh, flag counter descending the most awesome on top. There. Now, we want to see if there are like 26 answers to a, a question, we, well, we might want to see the numbers of these answers rated by how, how awesome they are. So let's add a field here called uh, uh, global views view result counter. It's a useful field. It's a very small tip, I know, but hey, uh, let's not have a label starting value one apply. Let's rearrange, apply, and save. And you will now see when I reload this page, we have the rating here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, maybe more useful if you have like long lists and want to refer to hit number 17 or something, but uh, you can use that in any way you like. So that's a row count tip number eight. Number nine is to style with replacement patterns. Okay, so if we have questions with zero, well, with uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, so with zero awesome count, we might want to wa warn people about those, or if the, we have a high enough awesome count, we want, might want to highlight or something. Um, it's a bad example, but but still, I'm gonna show you here in. Uh, how unfortunate we have this flag counter below. Let's uh, change the order here. That doesn't make sense right now because you probably want to see the title of the answer before you see the number of awesomeness, uh, awesome flags you have on it. But still, I'm going to show you. If I edit the title here, title field and set the style settings, we can customize uh, the field HTML and we can add CSS classes. These CSS classes can use replacement patterns and that's kind of really useful. Let's have, come on, let me see here, counter. We can use counter uh, to, to get uh, the number of, uh, no, count, 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 here it is, to get the number of awesome flags on, on it, on uh, an answer. So let's not rewrite anymore. So we can use here uh, flag count count here. So we will get flag count zero, flag count one, flag count two, depending on how many awesome flags we have on uh, on the answer. And that will be a CSS class, and we can style for it. And this using replacement patterns as CSS classes allows you to have some more flexible styling in views, which may be useful in some cases. This won't show up on my site here because I don't have any theming at all on it, except for the basic stuff in uh, Bartik. Okay, so styling with replacement patterns is tip number nine. Let's go for tip number ten, default menu tabs. How crazy is that? Um, I would like to have two sub-tabs here, uh, where I would like one tab to have uh, all the answers, and the other one to only display the top answer, the, the uh, answer with most awesome counts on it for, for this question. So I can click on answers here and then I get the best answer. And then I have another tab here showing all the answers if I want to uh, look at the other ones. How to do that? Well, let's clone. start by cloning this page. Clone. And getting the uh, most, uh, well, the highest voted uh, answer is pretty easy on this page here. I'm gonna not use pager. I am going to display a specified number of items for this display only. Apply, and I'm gonna display one. Done. Let's not show a table. Let's show an, uh, uh, 
I guess, unformatted. Well, let's have a table. I'm not going to change this right now. It's, that's not the point of this presentation. Uh, now, the path here for my uh, um, for my default page, when I click Answer tab here, I want to get to a sub-tab that is Top Answer. Uh, I'm going to change the path here to node slash percent slash answer slash say top top answer or yeah top or best or whatever you want to call it and then I take a menu here instead of a menu tab I'm gonna call it default menu tab and I'm gonna call it top answer weight 5 that's well let's have weight 0 actually apply now I'm gonna get the question, what is the parent item of this, um, this menu item? And that is a uh, menu tab, which should be called answers. Okay, I'm gonna to explain to you in a minute what's happening here. But first I'm gonna go back to this other page. Let's actually change the name of this display to, uh, here it is, to top answer. I'm going to go here to all answers. Uh, styling, please. Here. Let's call this all answers. And change this path now. This will be a sub uh, tab to node slash percent slash answers. I'm going to call it answers slash all. This is a page where all the answers appear. Save. So, what's happening here now? We have. Uh, node 36 answers slash top and we have slash all uh, the slash top is a default menu item default menu tab sorry uh, which means it will uh, respond to node 36 answers and node 36 answers slash top both of these addresses belong to this page and when i click answers here i automatically get this top answer thing and then i can click all answers and get this instead so the important thing if you want to try to use uh, default menu tabs make uh, a path that uh, well has the parent I well both a sub uh, tab and the parent item in the path here and then you can start designing uh, default menu tabs ah that wasn't the best explanation I've ever given but let's uh, be satisfied with that because that was tip number 10. I'm going to contextual links and then to the aggregation settings. Wow. Contextual links. Now, now let's have a look at, say, the all answers page here. Menu tab. Look at this option here. Context. It's so exciting. I have to click it. Uh, if I do that, apply. Well, let's call it all answers instead. That's better. Now this will turn uh, this link, in, well, this uh, this view into a contextual link. Let's go to the start page because this is so cool. Look at this. This uh, cogwheel here will give you normally like view, edit, maybe delete, edit, delete. Let's uh, seriously, come on. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, I think I think I know what's happening here. Let's see if I can get the top answer to, to do this uh, as well. No, I can't. Ah, oh, crappily crap. Okay, so let's clone this all answer uh, display. Oh, this sucks actually. This was uh, the... Um, <sighs> Okay, let's do it like this. I'm gonna uh, cheat a bit. I'm gonna use node slash percent slash answers here. I'm gonna use a menu tab, but I'm not gonna display it as a menu tab, only as a contextual link. Context, but no menu tab, like, well, yeah, okay, so that's it. Apply. Now, this uh, will make uh, this view appear as a contextual link to node slash percent. Now it will work. Reload. 
what the okay let's flush all cache that might help as well or this might be because I'm uh, taking the same path twice yeah it is okay so let's um, contextual I'm gonna call it contextual instead Really awesome presentation. This was well spent two minutes when I only have 30 to go and I spent like 31 already. Now, I have this all answers thing here. Clicking that will bring me to node 51 contextual and you see we get this destination thing here as well but that's not really fun right now. This gives me this view back and now it contains nothing which is kind of interesting. Uh, that's because this view don't have any uh, answers to this no doesn't have any answers this one does it has four comments so this will give us a list of all four comments like this okay so that's a way to to like giving administration links or something easily available if this was a say bulk if use bulk operation bulk operations view you could have this this would make sense to to have a quick path to to administering this view this uh, node in some way Okay, finally, finally, aggregation. Uh, I am going to show you what aggregation is and how you might be able to use it. Here's a view I prepared called Answers Contributors. We have on the site uh, quite a few comments written by quite a few users. So I have like four different user accounts on this site. It might be interesting to see how many answers are provided by each user. And that can be done using aggregation. Let's have a look at this view. Close these ones. Don't need you anymore. Okay, so we have a view here with answer title and username. I am going to remove everything that makes um, each row here unique. So I'm going to remove the, well, the titled field go away title field of the comment so now I only have usernames here and I want to know how many times each user appears in this list and well and that is done by uh, turning on this aggregation thing but then you have to remove anything else that might make each line here unique and the sort criteria is one of these things because it sorts by post date and post date is probably unique for each comment so let's remove that one as well Wow. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on aggregation, aggregate, and now I can do some cool stuff with the view. I can now, you can see I have some aggregation settings. If I turn this on and say uh, count, instead of getting the username, I'm going to get the count of how many times that username shows up. Now I will probably only get one here. Yeah, we have 169 uh, comments this one says because now everything is the same and all we don't even get the username back so we get only 169 posts and views aggregates these to this number 169 so I'm gonna add a new field here which is also the username again uh, username and the aggregation setting here will be group results together every time a uh, name appears more than once it will be grouped together with, with itself. So no more than one appearance for each uh, name here. So now we can see how many times the anonymous user posted or answered a, a, a question, administrator, and so on. That's kind of useful. And I'm actually going to add a sort criteria here as well. Uh, name count. We're going to sort by this username count. Wow, sort descending, the, mo uh, the people contributing the most on top, like this. That's kind of useful. And now, obviously, these titles don't make sense, but that's another uh, problem. Right, answer contributors are here. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. 12 tips for views in high speed. Uh, I'll see you in another screencast, I guess. Nice uh, being here. Goodbye.